so I use the words inner knowing for shorthand, but it really is how source, which for me, source is God, the universe, spirit, you know, the divine. Um, it doesn't have to be religious. It's energy, the collective consciousness. It's all the same thing. I'm guessing your audience has a similar view. Um, and so it's how source wants to work with and through you to create higher consciousness on the planet. Cool. Very cool. So it really, you know, everybody's magical and people have more than one magic. There's also expression, expansion, recognition, and compassion. Uh, most people in my sphere are multi-magical. I'm sure anyone listening is. And it really is coming from this assumption that when you follow that, you're, whether you're doing it through a business or not, when you're following your magic, you're shifting the energy field on the planet. Hello, my extraordinary women friends. You know me. I love the soulful side of business. Today, we're diving deep into source magic in your business and your life with my friend, Darla Ledoux. You are in for a treat. But before we jump in, a quick reminder that the ninth annual Extraordinary Women Ignite Conference is just around the corner. If you are desiring a business filled with your soul clients, endless possibilities, and a clear path to scalable growth, all while achieving time prosperity and wealth prosperity, then Ignite is your must-attend conference of the year. The room will be filled with extraordinary women just like you, so grab your tickets now at camigelner.com forward slash Ignite and get ready for an event that will truly elevate both your business and your life. Now let's meet today's guest. Darla Ledoux is the author of Shift the Field and founder of Sourced, a premier graduate school for transformational leaders. She supports coaches, consultants, creatives, and healers to offer and deliver deep transformational work with their magical gifts. A chemical engineer turned intuitive guide, Darla is masterful at turning intangible concepts into practical ideas that make a difference. She teaches clients how to alchemize old stuck energy patterns to create quantum leap type results financially in their business and their clients' lives. Shift the energy field and transform the experience of life. Let's meet Darla Ledoux. Well, welcome to Extraordinary Women Radio, Darla. It is so great to have you here today. Thank you, Cammie. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to hearing your story. You and I have known each other for a, several years, many years, yes. and um, but I don't know all of the story. So, and I love the work you're doing. I love where work has guided you and what's, you know, this soul work. I mean, that's where I think our work is so align totally. it's like the, it's like we we speak the same love language and yes. um so i think our journeys probably have a lot of similar threads to them soul is my love language <laughs> truth yeah so good so good and you um you were a chemical engineer yes or you are a chemical engineer that doesn't yeah, go away right. i don't know am i am i not it's hard to say yeah. So how did you, how did you make the pathway from chemical engineer to doing this very deep, soulful work that you do today? Yeah. You know, I often say our ego chooses our first career mm -hmm. and that was definitely the case for me. I had, you know, in this work of transformation, I've discovered, I had a whole conversation. I had to be smart to get love, which sent me down the track of becoming an engineer so I could prove how smart I am. And um, I was about four years into my career and I got nominated to become a coach within the company. And they were putting groups through what I call diversity training for shorthand. But it was a training to coach people who were in new working relationships to help them identify if there was any belief they had about each other that would get in the way of them working well together. Mm -hmm. And it was so brilliant. And I like I now know how cutting edge it was. <laughs> but um, I went through this training. And we did a particular exercise that changed my life. So everybody's on the outside of the circle. And this is people from all levels of the organization. I was, I think, a senior engineer at the time. And there were, you know, vice presidents and administrative assistants, like everybody in the room. And we had 
had to go one at a time to the center of the circle to share our biases about things like gender and race and sexual orientation and age. And the people on the outside of the circle were listening for whether we were telling ourselves the truth. And we got a thumbs up if we were telling the truth about our bias and a thumbs down if we weren't. Like basically what we learned about these, you know, conversations. Right. And first of all, I went to the emergency room the night before I had to do my first fishbowl because I was so not used to sharing myself, yeah. let alone in a group, right? I was an engineer and I presented data and the data made my case and I got things approved or not based on the data. And so to be in the center of a circle and have to tell my story that was my truth was terrifying. Oh my gosh. And you were making yourself sick over it. Oh, totally. And yeah, I now know, and we're going to talk about magic. I have a lot of sensation magic, which is like the physical body reacting to things. And so we'll get to that. But I learned in that training that we can tell when people are telling the truth. That we know in our bodies, we know Mm -hmm. in our field when people are telling the truth. So you were just observing and seeing what was happening and you could tell by listening inside. And I was in this place where we, in corporate, we would have the meeting before the meeting to make sure everyone was on the same page for the meeting so that no one would ever have to risk telling the truth in a meeting, basically, right? It's all these like little (laughs) side meetings getting ready for the meeting. Oh my God. I so remember. Yeah. (laughs) And when I'm in this training, I'm like, oh my God, why doesn't everybody know this? Why are we not talking about this? I don't understand why this isn't the thing that we're talking about. And so the seed was planted for me that I really want to do this work in the world. And I was trained to do this in corporate and I would do it one to two hours a week. We'd have these little meetings to help people get their biases out. And I just really wanted that to be my career. I was terrified. I was in my 20s. I didn't know why anyone would listen to me. I had no framework for being an entrepreneur. Like my parents are working class. You go to work until you retire or die. Yep. And so I didn't really know what to do with it, but the seed was planted there. Mm, That's so, that's beautiful. And so how did you make that leap? What was, because that's one of the things I've been actually doing a lot of studying of how Mm -hmm. women take the leap out of the corporate world into entrepreneurship and then really succeed. Um, You know, what are some of those factors? So what, what Mm -hmm. is it that you, um, what helped you take the leap? And then what do you attribute to your success? Mm -hmm. There's two moments I can think of for taking the leap. The first was my stepdad died Mm -hmm. and he was 52 and he had just gotten promoted into a job he loved. And then he was diagnosed with cancer and he was gone three months later. Oh my gosh. And one, just seeing him finally go for it and then die. There was something in that that really got me. Just bumps off of that. Yeah. Yeah. And then When he was diagnosed, I went to be with him as much as I could. And there was a certain point when my boss said, you have to come back to the office. I know you're working. I trust you, but we don't trust everybody. And so we need to see you here. And so I went back. I traveled back to Ohio and I went into the office and he passed away while I was there showing my face, like within a day. And so I didn't get to be with him. Now, I think, Cammie, people don't like to die around me. So there's that. (laughs) I've learned that now. (laughs) But it, that was it. It was like, I never want to have to be somewhere where my heart isn't because someone else said so. So it was that combination that really put me over the edge. Well, and you know, my journey to the corporate world was when my past, my dad passed away. So I I totally get Mm. that. Um, It was, I got laid off first and then I, um, and then I, um, my, my father passed away about a month later. Um, wow. but it was a journey after that of just really coming back home to me because I had really lost touch with who I was as a person. Um, yeah. and you know, I, I wore too many masks and, you know, so that there was this whole journey of just coming back home to me. 
Now, when you took mm -hmm. that leap, um, I know when I first met you, you, you had the whole retreat and grow rich, mm -hmm. um, your book that, that you yes. had there. And that's what really drew, drew me into you because I was like, Oh, I want to, I want, I think I started following some of your work in that space and that's yeah. evolved now. Right. So the, your work has evolved as, as they, as our yeah. work always does, right? We have multiple <laughs> There's nothing versions. like a global pandemic to make your work evolve, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's, you know, the nature of being entrepreneurs is our work does always evolve because yeah. we're growing, we're evolving. And so how did you get, come into doing your work is really about it's sourced, right? It's called mm -hmm. your, your work is called sourced. So how yeah. did you, how did you come into your sourced work? Yeah, I'm glad you brought up Retreat and Grow Rich because that was my first book. We still have the website. We still have a course people can access. Um, and, you know, I really I started working with entrepreneurs and people were saying, I just want a business model like yours. So I was delivering a lot of the work in retreat. So we would have, you know, coaching calls and support in between for implementing actions. But the real shift of energy would happen in a live retreat and people loved coming and they would, you know, keep re-upping so they could come to the retreats and they wanted to know how. So I started to put together just training for my clients that I would deliver in general business retreats about how to host profitable retreats. And it kind of took on a life of its own. It's, you know, the audience began to narrow to be transformational leaders who already get what transformation is mm -hmm. rather than bringing in new people giving them their first understanding of how to shift more into truth. So it just kept elevating the way I was working and the conversations I was having in a way that was really fun. But then I had the voice of a mentor in my head. And I know you and I really agree on to, you know, coming from a soul space in choosing your strategy rather than trying to fit into a formula. Thank you. <laughs> yes. I, and that's what I think of when I think of your work. Yeah. And well, thank you. That's spot on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I had this voice of a mentor in my head that said, if you're not doing big events in this space, you're really nothing. Basically, like she would oh, say wow. that directly, like you have mm -hmm. to do big events to be anything in this industry. And so I had done a couple big events and launched masterminds and they went well and I liked it, but I didn't love it. It was not the top way for me to feature my magic, at least at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I was hosting retreats for Retreat and Grow Rich. I had the book. I had a webinar that people could take. And then they would um, get invited into a course where they'd be invited to the retreat. And sometimes I would bundle them together. And sometimes people would buy both separate. But all that is to say, I had this automated system where people would show up at my retreat and I would walk in the door and lead and leave. And some of those people would go on to keep studying with me. Um, we're big into integration support. Like you learn the thing at retreat, but then you still need to go implement it. And so that was all working really well. We were having six figure retreats regularly. And but this mentor's voice was in the back of my head. Mm -hmm. You're nothing if you don't host big events. And so I was hosting an event. I had it planned. I had to say, I just got to say that. Oh my God. I didn't. So this is, this is where the fire and passion for being sourced comes from because right. I didn't have the wherewithal to discern for myself if that was true. Right. Right. She said it with such conviction. So it must be truth. Exactly. Right. And I just, yeah. And I, I, I look at myself and I know I just didn't have the ability to decide that my knowing was more accurate for me than whatever her truth was. Right. So here I am hosting an event, put a bunch of money into it. I hired a famous speaker. I like all of these things that are just not me. And, but I, it felt like it was my intuition was like, it was a coincidence, this person was going to be hosting an event in my town the same week, and could I get her to come speak? And, and so it felt like intuition. And I, but the whole event was really coming from this person's voice in my head, like, you have to do this. Mm. And 
it didn't go well. I was on the phone with a friend and I heard myself say, if it weren't for this stupid event, my life would be so easy right now. And I know you're really passionate about time freedom as well as money freedom. And I, I heard myself say it. And I knew that was problematic. (laughs) And then I thought about it. Like, it really is true. I have a lot of time freedom, but I decided to do this other thing instead. Yeah. Because of someone else's voice. And because I thought it was intuitive and, you know, all the things. But it really was that fear. What if I'm wrong? And what if I don't do an event and I fail at everything? Yeah. So, so I'll just throw this out there, though, too, from the perspective of, you know, we look at our different mentors and teachers that we have over the course of our lifetime. And we have different mm-hmm. experiences with all of them. Right. Yes. And sometimes we get pulled into uh, something that's really out of joint for ourselves within that. Yes. And there's so much to learn from that. And so this is what I'm hearing. Yes. This is you just by if she wouldn't have done that, you may not have landed in the work that yes. you do today. It's very true. Absolutely. Yeah, it's the story, right? Yeah, it really yeah. is the, the genuine story. Today, we help our clients tune into their what we call their sourced magic. Mm-hmm. There's six different magic types, and it's six ways of access, basically. We say it's how source wants to work with and through you to create mm-hmm. transformation on the planet. Mm-hmm. And so we're really supporting people in accessing that. Excellent. And you know, I had to detox from that culture of someone give me an answer. Yeah. And we help our clients detox from that culture. And because it's so easy to say, oh, here's the answer, follow, do what I did. But, you know, everybody's energy blueprint is different, what lights them up, how they're meant to serve. You know, it's, it's crazy to think how much money we've spent on formulas (laughs) collectively, you know, and they have all been ways to learn. So yeah, there's and nothing I love, I've done I've regretted. Yeah, and I love that you you call them there's six different ways of magic. So give us a couple of those because that's fascinating to me. Yeah, yeah. I was you know as I was preparing for this conversation, I was thinking about um why it's so important. You know, it's it. This is our inner knowing. This is our ability to tune in and say that might be true for you, but it's not true for me. Right, and. The more skilled we are at that, the less we have to get mad at the person who doesn't agree with us or have the same (laughs) knowing, right? It's like, okay. And this is what is true for me. So there's six types. Um, I mentioned my sensation magic earlier. Um, So one of them is called sensation magic, and it's feeling physically in your body the Mm -hmm. energy patterns, your own stuff, but also picking up other people's. This is and being able to discern discern between the two, right? Yes, yes, yes. So, in my own journey, growing up, you know, and I think part of why this work is so important to me, it's like I'm feeling it so deeply. Um, my family was completely in untruth, right? It was like whatever was actually going on and what they were telling me was going on was so different. And I could feel the lies in my body. And so I just numbed out, right? I I ate a lot. I was overweight. I so I could numb out all of these feelings in my body. And it's taken me a long time to reclaim and be able to actually feel what what truth feels like in my being. And it's one of the gifts I use the most with clients where I might be talking with them and their head might say, oh, this is what I need to do to work on whatever. And my body is saying, yeah, but there's something in your second chakra that like, until we look at that, all the strategy in the world doesn't matter. So good. I love and it. so it's, you know, a I way bring, of knowing. I bring the horses into my work. When, so when yes. I'm doing the equine guided retreats with my clients, the horses help. They, yes. they will, they will somatically, I mean, they will tap into our somatics. They're not, they're not somatically. They tap into our somatics, what's going on. And you know, if we're being really um, aligned with what, how we really truly feel the deepness of, you know, the, yes. what, what we feel and what's truth true for us and, or, or if we're not, 
and they can tell it's, it's so it's, it's magical. That kind of, I use the word magic a lot from the perspective of it. It blows me away. It, it leaves me in awe of what we can discover from our own bodies. So I love so that. For, I love that. Excellent. It could be. So that could be the horse has sensation magic or another one is vibration magic. Yeah, that's true. And so it could be vibration. I don't know enough yeah. about horses, but I have had equine experiences on retreat before and it's been phenomenal. Yeah. So yeah, I love that. So vibration is another one. So whether yeah. we're in vibration, right? Aligned vibration. Yeah. Um, so there's this ability a vibration magician can pick up the vibration of their client or whatever the situation is, they might see the energetic connection between two people in a situation or hear the vibration when someone's speaking mm -hmm. and a word is off or feels heavy. They can kind of pick up the vibration the person's coming from. And there's also this sense, and this is why, you know, it's, th it's from source. It's not logical. The, a vibration magician can also see the vibration that's most aligned with a person's soul. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when, when a vibration magician is your coach, they're seeing, you know, the things that are getting in the way vibrationally, and they're also able to tune in to where you're going and hold that truth of that frequency. Nice. The downside, if you're a vibration magician, is you might see someone's truth and interact with it as if they're there. Yeah. They so may you not might be there tend yet. to like, like let go, people in. Just go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you see the best yeah. vibrationally of a person and they may not be there yet. So yeah. that can be a downfall. So then you've got to help. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. So you work with sourced magic in general. Can you, mm -hmm. is there a description that you can add, you know, bring to sourced mm -hmm. magic? Yeah. We, so I use the words inner knowing mm -hmm. for shorthand. Mm -hmm. But it really is how source, which for me, source is God, the universe, spirit, you know, the divine. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to be religious. It's energy, the collective yeah. consciousness. It's all the same thing. I'm guessing yeah. your audience has totally. a similar view. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's how source wants to work with and through you mm -hmm. to create higher consciousness on the planet. Cool. Very cool. So it really, cool. you know, everybody's magical and people have more than one magic. There's also expression, expansion, recognition, and compassion. Mm -hmm. uh, most people in my sphere are multi-magical. I'm sure anyone listening is. Um, and it really is coming from this assumption that when you follow that, you're, whether you're doing it through a business or not, when you're following your magic, you're shifting the energy field on the planet. Mm -hmm. And that's so important right now. Yes. So, so important. So is this, is, uh, is your book cover all these different areas of magic? It's in the latest book, which is called shift the field. Yeah. Um, I think my next book is going to be all about magic. So oh, cool. it's starting to, to ping and come through now, but there's a quiz as well, Cammie. Uh -huh. um, if you want to, Oh, do you want yeah. me to share yeah, that? Yeah, please, please, please. Um, so sourcedexperience.com forward slash quiz. They can find that there. And then I do have it set up where if you take the quiz and it'll give you the result, if you want to do a one-on-one -on -one session with one of our coaches to dive deeper into the magic, it's going to pop up with an offer. Um, so I just want to let people know that that's there. You don't have to take it. But if you do want to take it, we'll... We have a code Cami where they can get it half price. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. I love that. I love that. That sounds awesome. Um, so why don't people already practice this? Hmm. I was curious how this conversation might go with you and to get your experience too, as you're working with your clients. So obviously we call it magic. It's not necessarily which magic, although it could be construed as that. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of people, right, we're, we're in the assumption that the people who are leaning into owning their inner knowing as a guide for higher consciousness mm -hmm. are light workers, star seeds, you know, however you like to think about it, coming in to really do that work, whether it's in corporate or in a coaching business or as a speaker. And a lot of these souls have had 
lifetimes of persecution for this magic. And even if you haven't, it's in the collective mm -hmm. to be fearful of yes. something that you can't explain and justify. Yeah. And, and it, it, I so agree with that. I think there's been, um, there's been that this, this lifetimes of that happening and there's the whole disconnection as well, right? The whole, just, mm -hmm. they're just not even feeling it. They don't even know yeah. it. I mean, it, I think about the time when we came out of the corporate world, it was just such not a part of our realm, right? Totally. And I think it's becoming so much more accessible today. And it's, yeah. you know, whether, no matter where you are, it's like you can tap into, there's somebody. And I think there's been so many people who have been called to step up yes. and to lead like yourself in, in space, like, you know, bringing this type of, of wisdom back to life. Yeah. You use the word accessible. And that's really my goal is that this is a framework to make what you already know accessible to you, yeah. to give you permission to say that's real. Yeah. And, you know, you had asked about leaving corporate. The other moment that happened for me, I knew I wanted to do this work. I was so clear about that. And I had some debt from a marriage slash divorce that happened really quickly. I had some debt and I thought, I can't do this with this debt. I have to work in this job until I pay my debt. And I would calculate, you know, how long it was going to take. And it was going to be a long time. And so I would think and think and think and try to figure out how do I handle this? Like, how do I get to do what I love? Because I'm obviously this bad person with this debt. And one day I was driving down the road and I had just been connecting with a super magical person. So I feel now in retrospect, like the field was open. I was driving down the road and I was thinking about all these possible options for how to get out of debt so I could start my business. And when I was, I was just driving and my car swerved on the highway. Out of nowhere, there were no cars around. It wasn't dangerous, but it just swerved. Like my, my hand jerked and the car moved. And so I started reflecting, what was I thinking about when that happened? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had been thinking about cashing out this small retirement account I had to pay my debt. Now, everything in me, remember I said at the beginning, I have to be smart to get love. It's not smart to cash out your retirement early and pay the extra <laughs> penalties. And, uh -huh. and so I had thought about it a hundred times and been like, well, that's not smart. You can't do that. Yeah. And suddenly it's like, in my interpretation now, source grabbed my hand said, and yeah. said, just fucking do it. Right. 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 And it took me a little while to give myself permission to do what wasn't smart in mm -hmm. honor of my soul. Mm. And as soon as I did it, I got a call about a job that was the same exact amount, higher in pay, $35,000. And I took that job. And within six months, I got a severance package from that job because they, they ended up getting bought. And I got a chunk of money to start my business. Oh my gosh. What a now, logically, that made no sense. Anyone I talked to said, don't cash out your retirement. Right. But and I you had knew, to but trust you knew. Yeah. that that meant something, right? Yeah. So the magics are a framework to help you not think you're crazy for what you know that you already know that you're talking yourself out of anyway. Yeah. 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 That's so cool. That's a beautiful story. And it's like when we can get those moments of, of like, you know, signposts, that's what I call them in my book is a signpost when we get yeah. that moment, you know, where, where they grabbed your, where gra source grabbed your will and said, okay, yeah. listening, are you listening to me? And you heard, and there's a different knowing that just mm -hmm. drops inside when we can really yeah. start to pay attention to what's going on around us. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like I want to share one other thing. Yeah, please. Um, there's this other element. So on the one hand, we see a lot of entrepreneurs and light workers who don't trust their magic. And then on the other hand, people have been honing it or really trusting it in a, with their clients, right, in their client work. And it can cause issues with their marketing. So I just want to mm -hmm. say this as well, which is if you're super magical and people sense that and they're coming to you for that but you're not aware of it. And so you're just following the formulas. 
of how it's taught to be done, um, it can create a real mismatch. Yeah. So, you know, when I was thinking about the magics, I have a client who's vibration compassion. And so she's, when people get in her space, they're immediately increasing their vibration. Mm -hmm. And then compassion magic is this complete non-judgment, like everything is safe. It's a deep, deep heart energy. So people would come to her free webinar and they would get their hearts cracked open, their vibration, you know, up to here. And she didn't even know it, right? In her mind, she's just teaching the things that they taught her to teach. But people are having this whole energetic experience that in the traditional framework, she's not really being responsible for. Right, right. And so they would leave and, you know, they wouldn't buy because what she was selling was so different than what they were experiencing. Yeah. So I so get that. And I can think of times in my business where, I, I mean, this is why and like, don't, don't follow all the formulas because I can go back to times in my business where I actually did. And I changed up my, all my marketing around the, you know, I'm going to follow these formulas of all of these experts, these gurus. And what happened was, guess what? Your business drops. My business dropped. And mm -hmm. so that's when I came back home to build your brand, build your messaging from the inside out, yes. because that's how we resonate with our, so yes. it keeps it really in alignment. So I love that. I totally love yeah, that. Yeah. Like people like us would be bored anyway, yeah. if we weren't resonating right. with yeah. the work, right? And you think about when you make choices of who you, you're going to work for. Anytime I've ever taken a mentor, it has been by feel. It's been by my yes. gut. It's like, oh my gosh, she is the person I need to be working with. Yes. And I've made those choices always by feel. I love that. Yeah. Cool. 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 Um, so where can people learn more about your business? I know you mentioned your quiz. Um, where can they follow yeah. you? What, any, any of that? So sourcedexperience.com is our main website. And then you can add that slash quiz to get right to the quiz. Um, I'm on Instagram, Darla Ledoux. And then our Facebook is sourced. And yeah, we're there sharing what's new, what the latest is. Yeah. If you take the quiz, you'll get on my newsletter list. I do a weekly YouTube video. That's a short training and send a little message once a week there. Cool. 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 The final question I always close with are what are three pearls of wisdom you'd like to leave with us today? Hmm. The first is your magic and trust it. There's something really present for me around structure and flow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I teach a lot about this. Create structure that allows you to be in your magic. Like your magic is flow. Yeah. And don't outstructure your magic. Mm. So there, you know, there can be this tendency for magical beings to think they're doing it wrong or they're not enough. They don't have enough. This isn't enough. Mm -hmm. You need just enough structure for you to show up how you show up. Mm. Like um, an expression magician channels. Don't, don't outstructure your magic. Don't confine yourself to some structure that doesn't work for you. Yeah. So, you know, I know as an engineer, structure is part of me. Yeah. And I can tend to want to focus on the structure because it's safer than the magic. Yeah. Right. And yeah. your magic is always going to feel a little edgy because it's really alive. Ooh, and I so like don't that. outstructure your magic. So dance on both sides of it. That's yeah. right for you. I think that's the, the core part of that. Yeah. Excellent. I don't think I need a third. Just go okay. for it. Okay. <laughs> well, Darla, this has been delightful. It's been so much fun having you here with me here on the show. And you're here, here in Colorado a lot yes. these days. Yes. Excellent. So one of these times when you're going up and down the mountain, um, we'll have to uh, go okay. meet for a coffee. I would love that. Yeah, I would love that too. So, well, awesome. great, great to have you today. And um, um, thank you so much for all your wisdom. Thank you. Thank you for what you're doing. No, you bet.